What's up? Okay, um, today, so fine. This is not a weight loss video. This is a, um, if I can, you can craft video. So I do want to apologize. I'm making this video on my video camera and there's a screen next to it to make sure that everything that I'm doing you can see. So I do want to apologize if I'm looking off to the side of the camera a lot like this. That's because I'm just trying to make sure you can see what I'm doing. Um, this is so fun. It is absolutely my newest obsession. It's fast, it's easy, it is very zen, except that it goes by so quickly. So um, it's arm knitting. Let me talk to you about knitting. I have been, and if you have watched these videos, you've probably heard me talk about it before, obsessed with wanting to know how to knit. And I have totally, um, you know, just tried. I've bought, they, they say it's easier with the bigger needles. So I've bought bigger needles, all that kind of stuff. I have to admit that nothing makes knitting easy for me. It is frustrating. As soon as I feel like I have a groove going, I drop a stitch. It's ridiculous. Um, this project, this arm knitting project, I don't know the, the most about knitting, but it uses some of the same language, but it is a lot less hard uh, and technically advanced than a lot of the knitting that I was taught and attempting to do. So let me put that out there. Um, there are plenty of arm knitting videos, <laughs> like all over, but I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible. Some of them really complicate things, and we're going to talk about all of it. Um, it's a fast project. Let me show you what we're going to be making. Okay. Now, I have decided, first I'll show you. I have decided to make these as Christmas gifts. I know. It's July. Why am I thinking about Christmas? Because I swear to you that anytime I say I'm going to make crafts for Christmas, I wind up waiting to November and there's not enough time. And I have a long list. So, I'm going to go ahead, first of all. I'm going to go ahead and put my hair up. Hopefully it won't look too terrible because even though I can kind of see myself in that screen, I can't see too much. All right. So let me show you. Okay. This, this nice, giant, huge, fluffy scarf. If you get closer, it's all loopy and fun. It is awesome. Like, I love big thick scarves because I feel like if, like when it's cold down here, and down here it kind of gets like, it's cold but not, too, like I don't know, it's weird, it's a weird kind of cold for the most part, but there are some times when it's like so freaking cold it's ridiculous, but I feel like if I have this section nice and warm, I'm good. So this is a phenomenal scarf, it's really, really, it's so full of volume and it's big, it like totally keeps you snug here and then you have enough to like tuck into your coat. So I really love this style um, scarf. And again, this, this one's not perfect. This is my first full scarf that I made and I made it in probably, I don't know, I, I, yeah, I was gonna say 15 minutes, maybe it was 20, but I believe it was 15. Um, we'll time ourselves today. Okay, so that's that's what we're going to be making. Um, I went ahead and because I'm making these for Christmas time, I went ahead and I got these Ziploc um, limited edition. I got the violet bags. They have purple and, and orange. I got violet, which is purple, I guess. Um, and they are cool because they have the zipper at the top. The one that I just used was broken, so it doesn't have the zipper. They have the zipper at the top and they kind of like, instead of just being a flat bag, they have the bottom. And they're really easy to write on. So after, it's almost like a space bag for the scarf. Um, this one is going to my friend Gina. I call her G. So you just kind of tuck it in and it this will keep it protected from dust or animal hair, because I have animals in my house. Lots and lots of animals in this house. Um, you squeeze all the air out, close it up the rest of the way, and like on the bottom I have purple and G written so that I know what I have going on in there. 
and it's all done and I can just put it away and when Christmas comes I can take it out and I'm go my plan is to leave them in this bag and put them probably into gift bags but you could probably also just stick a bow on it just saying um okay so that's what we're doing right now I'm gonna show you we're gonna use that big loopy yarn but I don't want to show you what I'm doing the first time with the big loopy yarn because it can get a little complicated and I'll explain that to you um this okay this is still a bulky yarn it's a soft sh like chenille baby yarn I think that this is called like little sand castles I think it is let me see this is baby blanket yarn um and it is called little sand castles so um just to let you know if you're arm knitting you really want like a voluminous yarn because you're using your arm to stitch on and if you're using your arm to stitch on then you're gonna get big loops so to stop it from looking like a giant net with like big holes you want something that's gonna fill those holes up um, but I'm going to show you what we're doing with this so that you can see it because it gets a little lost in the fluff. So you're going to make a slip knot. This is the hardest part for me because I always forget how to make a slip knot. I don't know why. Uh -huh. Slip knot. Let me see if I can actually do that again. You make your loop, you pull this guy through, and then you close it. So that you wind up with a knot that can be, you know, slipped tighter or looser. That was ridiculous, the amount of time that took. Okay, you want it to go over your hand. You don't want it to be too tight because then you're going to have to waste your time pulling it out because you got it's got to go on and off your hand, right? So you're, you have your slip knot. You put your slip knot over your wrist um, and you that's your first stitch now you're gonna pick this part up okay ready you're just holding your sheer yarn now a lot of these go all like boop, boop, boop and like hold this and pull that and they want you to hold it like this and like that and like have that hurts my hand I can't do it like that um, this hand starts to cramp instantly and like pain goes up my arm so watch how easy this is you have it, loop it, put your hand through. That's your second stitch. You just keep doing that. You're picking it up, looping it behind it, putting it on your arm. You want six stitches. One, two, three, four. Pick it up, flip it, stick your arm through. That's five. Pick it up, flip it, stick your arm through. Again, this is not the yarn we're going to use. This is just to show you what we're doing. Now, so easy. Your long piece of yarn that is still connected to the ball, you take it in the hand that has the stitches. You pull the stitch over, and now you see how you have that? That's your new loop. Pick it back up, right? Pull it over, tuck it on the other hand. Pick up your long tail, pull it over, tuck it on the other hand. Pick up your long tail, pull it over, tuck it on the other hand. Pick up the long tail, pull it over, tuck it on the other hand. Pick up your long tail, pull it over, and you made your first row. And do you see what I mean by, since there's no real volume, this scarf would be like loopy, big holes see all right this is not what we're using though so we're going to take it apart watch how easy it is to take it apart take it off your hand and just let it go and it falls apart that will not happen with the loopy stuff because it grabs itself so there we go that's what we're about to do all right now we're going to get into so that was our stitches and i'm going to show you again when we have the actual loopy yarn but we're going to talk about the yarn and some tips First of all, you're playing with yarn. I don't know about your animals. If you have animals that are not interested, then you could do it right next to them. My animals are incredibly interested. Paisley is like 
what is that big shaggy toy and give it to me. The cats are all up in it. So I have to, like, this is the only room in the house. This is our bedroom. And it's the only room in the house that is animal free. The animals are not allowed to come in this room. Um, so this is where I arm it. Uh, that's the first thing. Second thing is, it's a good time to clean your rings. Because any jewelry, bracelets and rings, will grab onto the yarn, especially when you switch to the big loopy yarn. So I personally, I, like I just made one last night, so I already cleaned my rings, but um, I make a little a water, a cup of water as hot as the sink can get it. I put a tiny drop of dishwashing liquid in and I let them soak and then after I'm done with my scarf, I take them out and I brush them with a soft toothbrush and I rinse them thoroughly. There you go. Good time to clean your rings. All right. Up next, the kind of yarn we're going to use for this, you can use any big, fluffy, voluptuous yarn. And actually, there's a couple of other ones I can't wait to try. But I am using today, um, this is Red Heart Boutique, and it's the, the yarn is called Swerve. And as you can see, it's like one piece of black, um, almost embroidery thread, and it's got the yarn looped swerved in and out, right? And the color I'm using is called Baltic, and it basically goes from a green to a purple blue, like an indigo. Um, you're gonna use, these are 11 yards, I believe. 11 yards. And you're gonna use two skeins. This is a skein, right? Okay, now, it is easiest when doing this to this is the time, uh-uh, that's the wrong end. All right, that's what I wanted to say. So we took off our rings, we're away from the animals. Now is the time to start really, I unravel. Because this loopy yarn grabs itself, and what I mean by that is it, kind of, see how it's kind of, it's not knotted, it was just holding on to itself. If you flip it and kind of try to pull it around, like it, it holds on to itself. So what I do is I unravel my entire skein, okay? I just, it's going to drop to the ground right now. I just unravel it and make a big, loose pile so that I can, um, I can just start knitting with it. All right. So that was my first skein. My second skein is already right here in the bed. Well, this was my first one, really. It's already right here in the bed, and I already unraveled it. So now is the time, because you don't want to be doing this later. You're going to take the two ends of the skeins and just make a little knot. The, um... The blue string, like the swerve in and out, does make it a little bit frustrating. You can cut that off, which is what I am about to do, if I can find my scissors, because, oh, I put them down there. Sorry, guys. All right, so watch what I'm telling you to do. And, and look, all of this, like I said, I've only made one. This is by no means professional, but I got myself a little piece of black on the end so of this yarn. Put the two skeins together by clipping off some of the excess. Can you see that? Um, I'm trying to get it to focus on this. Some of the excess loopies so that you can deal with this black string right here. All right, if it's not focused, I'm sorry guys, I'm trying. So I did that on both sides and now I'm just gonna tie them together. You just it's better to have, like, to have shedded kind of a lot of that string and those loops so that you can really see what you're doing because if you cut them too short or if you wind up tying the knot with out the, um, the black string and you're using just the loops, it, it just gets all discombobulated. So just make it as good and tight as you can get it. Um... And it doesn't have to be or look absolutely perfect. There's mine. Okay. Got that little 
bit in here. They're tied together right there. Okay. So now we have the two skeins are joined. Again, we see how it's grabbing itself? That's not a knot, it just kind of got twisted up, which is why I take it and I loosen it all first. Hold on. Okay. And now I just kind of go really, really loose. So it's not grabbing itself at all. Um, it's not all wound up. It's not tight at all. <laughs> that's a, that's a big, it's a big key. Um, while I'm doing this part, I'm going to tell you, you, you want to use the bathroom. You want to put your hair up, anything and everything that could happen over the next 15 minutes, 20 minutes, your first time, maybe you want to try to make sure you've thought about it and it's not going to happen because in just a minute, you're going to be handcuffed, <laughs> kinky, uh, no, you're going to be handcuffed to your knitting for a little while. And the thing is, like I showed you the, um, the sand, the, the skinny yarn just kind of, this is what we're avoiding. Um, the skinny yarn just kind of comes off of itself, but this yarn kind of grabs itself. So you can't just undo it. If you drop a stitch, um, like I, I started this project before I had two skeins and I ran out of yarn and I was like, oh, okay. But I couldn't just pick up another project and just do it because your arms are your needles. So you can't just lay it down. You have to take your hands out. And because of the way this is, it's just almost impossible. So I took it all off and now I'm just going to drop it loosely in front of me. Um, I find it easiest to work with it directly in front of me. If you want to put it in a laundry basket or something like that, it doesn't matter. That's fine. So now we're going to do our slip knot, which we know I'm not great at. Um, but we're going to try to do it anyway. Oh, oh my gosh. I actually got that done. That's nice. All right. Slip knot. You want it, you know, like I said, now you have your jewelry off, you've gone to the bathroom, and you're ready to get started. So you slip it on your hand. I have very little wrist. And at one point, I had to remind myself to make them kind of big and loopy because it was getting kind of tight woven. And when it's tight woven, these little bits, they kind of almost smash themselves. All right. So... We have the slip knot on, like just like we did with the other rope. And if you need to go back to that part to remember what we're doing, it's fine. But I have the pile in front of me. I'm going to lift it up, spin it, and tuck my hand. Right? Lift it up, spin it, tuck my hand. Lift it up, spin it, tuck my hand. One, two, three, four. I want six stitches. Lift it up, spin it. Tuck, up, spin, tuck. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. Um, and now you're gonna take it, pull it through, slide your hand in. Take it, pull it through, slide your hand. Take it, pull it through, slide your hand. Take it, pull it through, slide through, slide, through, slide. So you kind of have like a cuff and you're just going to keep doing it and you don't have to worry about this thing. Like, like I said, you're going to fluff it afterwards. So here we go. There we go. I kind of want to time myself. So, let's say I'm, gonna, I'm playing with my phone. I can do it because I have it on one hand. Um, clock timer. Okay. So, 
All right. I feel kind of like we should talk, but at the same time, I have to pay attention because this is only the second time I'm doing this, and I don't want to screw it up. This one's mine, I think. Um, I don't know. I don't know. They're a whole lot of fun. They're super easy. I was all excited, and my mom was like, I didn't like that kind of stuff around me. I can feel the weight down here because my yarn is grabbing itself. That's okay. I just kind of shook it off. <gasps> I went in the wrong direction just now. Oh, much better. Okay. See what happens when I talk to you guys? <laughs> um, you can get this particular yarn, yarn, not yawn, um, online anywhere between three and five dollars in some places it's seven I would just pick it up on sale or use coupons my um, local fabric place always has like amazing coupons and like in store deals okay see see how it's happening all right um, one two three four five six you just want to make sure you haven't dropped a stitch every once in a while just so that I actually, this is not going to be mine, because I actually want to do one with um, more stitches for myself. So I'll probably do three to four skeins. I also think they'd make fabulous throws, um, but you would have to dedicate more time then to that. Um, you know, and of course, you can stitch only up as much as you can fit on your arm. Um, so you would have to think about the logistics of it, but I think we could probably make a blanket and I know that when I did 10 stitches, it was such a fabulous, fabulously thick scarf, like big, but it only made like a, maybe an eight inch long section. So, and I'm just grabbing down here I'm grabbing my long tail like I showed you pulling it through and sticking in my hand in so I'm grabbing pulling sticking grabbing pulling sticking um it's just getting kind of tight see okay and that's what I was talking about like it starts off really loose and kind of gets tight if you like because my wrists are small and my hands are kind of small so I have to remind myself to kind of make the, them big and loopy and to give it some extra rum. Come here, you. I love this color. Blue and green are my favorite colors and I absolutely adore this Baltic um, color scheme, how it goes back and forth. just did something because I'm talking to you guys. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, okay. Good job. I was like, I just dropped a stitch. All right. I can't figure out what I've done just now. All right. There we go. Grab it, pull it through, hand. Grab it. I'm telling you, it's just talking and doing at the same time. Now, I, last time, um, casting on is what it's called the first time you put it on your arm. That's when you first do your original six stitches. Casting off is when you're done. I personally mm -hmm. messed up casting it off because um, I, did, I ran out of tail and I don't know if it's called tail, it's the working yarn, but it looks like a tail and I ran out because I was so into this zen of counting six stitches and doing it that I totally um, didn't realize I was running out. Look, just within a couple of minutes, just within the past five minutes and I've like had to pause twice, I'm talking to you guys, look how long it is and it's so cool. Um, 
So I'm trying to keep my arms up so that you can see it. Um, hands, flip, grab, flip, grab, flip. Oops, lost my, my tail. Grab, flip. Grab, flip, grab, flip. I painted my nails to match the color scheme for you guys. Always thinking of you guys. Grab, flip, grab, flip, grab, flip, grab, flip. Okay. We're getting kind of close to the end. I really hope that I wind up on my left hand so I'm casting off with my right because it's a little complicated. It's not complicated, I mean, really, but... Just keep checking to make sure you want a, like, a fair amount of tail left. I think that I'm going to be able to do... Okay, so we're going to cast off. And casting off is going to be the same action, but just a little differently. You take it, pull it through, loop it. Take it, pull it through, pull it through, loop it. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna take, so there we go, right? Take this guy from behind and drop him there. Now this guy comes through, loop. You're gonna take the guy from behind, Drop him there. Comes through, loop, take him from behind, drop him off. Comes through, loop, take him from over here, drop him off. Ooh, what happened? Hold on a second. Yeah. Take him from over here and you're dropping him off. And then you're going to take this final guy, make your loop, put it on your arm. So you got the tail hanging over here. Take him, drop him off. And now you're going to take this tail around this final loop and you're going to make a knot. It's going to be a little complicated because you guys can't see it. Um, just because it's a kind of a, but you're just tying a knot. It's not that hard. Knotting it off. Oh, dang. Just broke that yarn. Obviously, you don't want to pull that hard. If it starts to come undone, I'll just, then you snip off your extra. Uh, you, I would play with this corner to kind of work it in, but I just snipped them, so I don't want to. So now you have your flat edge here that you just cast it off. And you have your flat edge here, that's from where you cast it on. And if you look, you can see the big holes, um, that it's like a big hole thing. But then I just kind of take them and kind of fluff them and work them out so that all the hoops are kind of the same and then you go like this and you have yourself a scarf like that I like to tuck the one end to make it big and like I said you have your little bit right here so there we go we just arm knitted and uh, it took to make the scarf it took about 10 minutes and that was while I played with you guys and talked and everything else Yay! Okay, if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, if you try to make it and it comes out, like, 
you can send me a picture or upload a video and talk about it. And if you have any questions um, and you want me to be more specific about something in a video, I will totally do it. Like if casting off or casting on or the stitches or anything like that is confusing, let me know and I will definitely update. So hope you enjoy it and I can take my hair down because you can't really have your hair all up in your place. You can't really have jewelry and stuff, but there we go. We just arm knitted a 10 minute scarf. How exciting.